Welcome to another episode of the Side Boob Podcast, the number two podcast in the entire world. Yeah. How you doing? I haven't talked to you in yeah. like a week. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long week, to be honest. Um, well, yeah, I'm all right. A bit, bit devastated with the Joshua result. But, I mean, if you look at the last, last podcast, the last podcast, I did see it coming. So, you did. it's not like and I was massively surprised. I called you a liar because I couldn't see it. Yeah. And well, I still well, can't see it. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right, is sometimes, I know I talk about Sean O'Malley a lot with his height advantages and stuff like that, but like Marab showed, sometimes it doesn't matter what advantages you have. It's about how you've prepared and how oh, yeah. you've got to that <laughs> stage. So the, the reason why I could see that happening was because Joshua's last few fights have been against Franklin and Garden and Otto Wallin, which are not that high level. Whereas the Guars have been against um, Usyk, Irgovic, uh, and I uh, can't remember who the other one was. But right. they were all like, very high level. So I thought, if, if anyone's going to be sharp at the two, it should be the Guar, you know. So, mm-hmm. And then I look at the age, they've got a 10 year age difference. You know, AJ's on the wrong end of that, the bar's on the right end of it. So, yeah, it's like I said in the last podcast, it was kind of like a passing a torch moment. Yeah, I, I mean, here, I mean, it, it was, you know, I was watching it kind of passively at first, but once Joshua got rocked in that first round, I'm like, okay, let me pay more attention to this because yeah. I didn't see it coming. And I feel silly for not seeing it coming because it just seemed so obvious once the fight actually started. Yeah. Joshua looked flat and Dubois looked like he was going to, to knock some heads off, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was my, my ideal dream was for Joshua to get that title again. Like, not, not the one off Dubois, but to, to get it again off, like, Usyk or whoever had the most belts. But, like, part of me, I just couldn't see it, like, like, I think Joshua has been great, and I think if that was prime Joshua against prime Dubois, I think it would have looked totally different, because I think Joshua would have taken that shot in the first round, you know, um, and recovered a bit better. But, yeah, at the end of the day, though, he, I think Joshua did himself quite proud. I mean, one thing people used to say a lot about him was like, oh, he's, he's got no, you know, he's, he's mentally weak, and, and he's got no chin. Which I never understood where do you get that from? Like, what example have you got for me of this to show me? And mm-hmm. people would go to the Ruiz fight. But I, I used to say, well, how's that? This, for one, how's that a sign of a weak chin? No one would take that off the Ruiz. Yeah. And two, like, mentally weak. The referee had to call that fight off. He didn't stop in that fight. He didn't take a knee. He didn't, you know, pretend to be knocked out. The referee mm-hmm. had to literally, like, stop it. So I think. In a sad way, it's, it's disproven a lot about the mentally weak and the weak chin stuff by taking what he took in that the bar fight, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he was on spaghetti legs more than once. I thought it was over, I think, two to three times. I'm like, damn, he just keeps getting up. And, you know, he shook it off like a man. And it, I think it, it's a fallacy and kind of farcical to say in the heavyweight division, like to call anybody weak chinned. Because yeah. all of these guys are 200 plus pounds hitting you as hard as they can. It, it, you, to say yeah, you have a weak chin is just an, a silly, silly thing. Anybody gets it, caught just, clean, uh, they're going to go to sleep. Yeah, just taking a jab off a heavyweight, you know. It's, yeah, I would be out. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think anyone would, you know. So the fact that they take multiple in a fight or in sparring. I mean, I've never, I've never liked that. Um Especially with boxers, the whole, oh, he's got a weak chin. It's like, mate, these guys set up punches perfectly. Like, I've caught the, the punches set up to turn you off. They don't mean mm. you, your chin's weak. Yeah, and then I, I saw one, and Joshua leaned right into it, and he caught him with a clean okay. cross, and boom, like, his face distorted. It was just, like, this perfect yeah. lean right into it and just, come on, man. My, my head's going to spin around, you know? <laughs> That's it, yeah. And like, and... The way all that led into it, I think Joshua just caught him with a clean. Uh, yes, right before that. Yeah, he was so, he was backing him up, and then he had Dubois yeah. kind of on the on on the run a little bit, 
and that's, and that's one of the out, things to go out that, credit for taking that and and then taking it and then thinking right J, aj is walking in so i'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna like, come cra- and crack him clean yeah. and that was that was one of the things when i was watching the fight i kept waiting i was like okay he Dubois is going to get tired because he's throwing bombs. I was like, yeah. AJ just has to survive like the first four rounds, and I think he'll be fine. Yeah. And I just kept thinking that. <laughs> like, he's going to eat these shots. He's going to get knocked down. But I think he's a better technical boxer. So once Dubois gets tired of throwing these haymakers, he's going to win the fight. It just never yeah. went to that point. <laughs> That's how I looked at the fight before it happened. Like, basically, I looked at it as a fight of two halves. If AJ could survive the first half, Mm. It's his fight to win, like. But if he can't survive the first half and the bar gets his half off perfect, then it's going to be a bad fight for AJ. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. if you watch how both of them fight, that that fight was quite predictable. Like, if you've watched how they both fight over the past like a few years, um, but the bar's not shown that kind of technicality. For like, I've not seen the bar look so technically good. Like, yeah, he didn't miss. He did not miss. <laughs> that that no. was that was the astonishing thing. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I think a big part of it was that first one. As soon as that first one landed, I think the fight was over. Like in that first round, you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean, uh, you're gonna hate this, but what it reminded me of, I think it was Fury Wilder two, yeah. where Fury just came out like blitzing and like just overwhelmed Wilder. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that. Once you put him down that first time, you could kind yeah, of see. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, in an ideal world, I want AJ to retire. Because, like... I thought he was going to. Yeah, me too. But he wants to carry on. Like, he, mm-hmm. he's got a rematch clause for this. So, I mean, it would be intriguing. If he, if he can beat the bar in that rematch, it would be intriguing. But part of me thinks... I think that chin's gone. By like, I know I was just saying that he's proven, you know, that he, he had a strong chin, but I think it is gone now. Like, and yeah, I just worry that all the way take like if Usyk, if he goes into a fight with Usyk, mm. it's going to be the same story. He's going to get landed on first round, and it's going to be a similar story. Yeah, I just I feel like you can never count anybody out in the heavyweight division. Oh no, and. Yeah. and it's anybody's fight anytime they go at it. So it wouldn't surprise me if Joshua wins the next one and just outpoints him. Or, yeah, you know, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if he knocked him out, too. It's, yeah, it's... I still believe Styles make fights, and I still believe Joshua beats Fiori. I still stand on that, you know. Um, I don't think Fiori has the power yeah, to no. do anything like what Dubois did to Joshua. So I don't see Fiori deterring Joshua in any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think if he. If you can't deter Joshua, Joshua's going to end up putting him hit. down. Yeah, he, so... Because he had, he had reason to pause. After he got cracked that first time, he was kind of a little yeah. hesitant to come in. And every time he came in, he got cracked, dude. Yeah. And, like, he, he laid a shot on Dubois right before he got knocked out. Yeah. He had Dubois wobbly. And oh, then... mate, I was off my seat. I was like, go on. Like, <laughs> um, me, me and my dad were all watching it. And, like, obviously, we're all... Basically, we're all happy with that fight. We're all happy whichever way it goes. However, it ended up, yeah. yeah. But because of what AJ's done, you kind of support him a little bit more because because of everything he's done for like the country and all that. So yeah, as soon as that landed, we're all like on our feet, like go on, go on. And then yeah, it was pretty inevitable. Like the moment he sent blood, he was gonna get. Uh, you know, what I mean, it was. I mean, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. It was a. It was a good. You know, five round fight for what it was. Um, I didn't have a dog in the fight. I mean, I, I know Anthony Joshua significantly more than I knew this Dubois guy. Like, I didn't know yeah. of him before we started talking about him, to, in all honesty. Well, you so, know what's funny was I remember five years ago doing this podcast. I remember mentioning, oh, there's a 20 year old lad called Dubois. He's been, uh, been sparring with AJ. Apparently, he's going to be the English Mike Tyson and all this stuff, so there will be a clip of me saying that um, on the old podcast, but yeah, so... That's it, awesome. Call yeah, it it's out. pretty cool, though. He's, the bar has been built pretty cleverly, I think, by they've kept him away from the limelight, but they've kept him in big fights. 
was gonna say he fought Usyk, so it can't really be away from the limelight too much. Yeah. No, I mean in terms of like, like Joshua and Fury, that they're, they're promoters. The bar's promoted by Fury's promoter, by the way. Um, oh. But but their promoters will, uh, you know, push them and get them on advertisement boards and all that stuff. Whereas the bar is not really had that treatment yet. Whereas I don't know if that's his choice or not, because right. seems very quiet. Be... No, I was going to say, he seemed like a more quiet person. But Joshua seems that way, too. He doesn't seem like yes. overly brash in your face kind of a guy. So. I think with Joshua, it was more forced on him. Like, because cause he did so well at the Olympics. And um, I think he got silver in the World Championships as an amateur as well. I think, like, the nation just kind of pushed it on him. Like, I'm here, car. Where it was like, right, you're going to be the next one, no matter what. <clears throat> I, I feel like uh, with Joshua too, it's like he has a good look. You know, he's very yeah. a marketable face. You know, he has a great physique. You know, he just he fits so many different boxes. So you can kind of use him for whatever advertisement you need. You know, so I, I feel like you know Dubois obviously doesn't have that chiseled physique or you know the square jaw or like that. Per- you know, yeah. like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like if there's a new Men in Black movie, like you could advertise that. You know what I mean, like. <laughs> See, he looks. He does remind me a bit of like an alien, like like there's an alien inside of a human body. <laughs> like there's something a bit off about him, not in a bad way. Yeah, don't beat us up. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like don't hurt me. Um, but yeah, it's it's so intriguing. Is um, so now they've all fought each other apart from the two that everyone would want to fight, <laughs> which is Age of Fury. I so, saw a tweet today that reminded me of you. It says, is AJ and Fury the modern day Ferguson Khabib? Yeah, it literally <laughs> is. Because every time, every time it's close, there's like a cable to trip them up. You right. know what I mean? So it really is. Um, a big part of it was because the promoters wouldn't work together. So mm-hmm. Eddie Earn and Frank Warren would never work together like you know, they'd never help each other out, so they'd never let their big stars fight each other. <laughs> but since Saudi Arabia, that that's kind of erased that. Like, literally, the, the fight card the other night was both Warren and Hearn and another guy called uh, Ben Shalom, all their fighters fighting each other, which is so rare in the UK. Um, so that always was a stumbling block. And then, obviously, you're, like... We could all see what Fury's done and said to, to stop the fight from happening over the years. And then literally every time it's close enough, one of them loses. So, oh, like one of them's locked into like a trilogy uh, or something. Yeah, a three fight rematch clause or yeah. you know, some silly shit. And, and that's the good and the bad of boxing. And I think I've said it on this a few weeks ago. Like, I love that you have like automatic rematch clauses for like random situations. So, like, you know what you're getting into. Right, you you know what's booked. Whereas the UFC, they could put number one versus number eight coming off a loss. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like... well, do you know what? That that I've got a theory. You know, I saw uh, the UFC is in Paris soon, isn't it? This weekend. You know, it's this weekend. Yeah. So I saw that the Cyril Garn fight is off because Volkov has pulled out. Right. Yeah, right. I saw that Volkov was out. Is, my theory is right. It's the John Jones fight is like a week after, I think, isn't it? Uh, somewhere around there, not yeah, too long after that. Very close. My theory is is that one of them two, Stipe or Jones, can't make is the fight. Out. <laughs> yeah, and so we're gonna get Cyril Garn versus Tom Aspinall on that day, but yeah. we're not gonna announce it until a couple of days before the fight. So once everybody's already bought the pay per view, and yeah, like literally. That that's my prediction right here. Like as soon as I saw that fight was off, I thought, well, it's strange that they've not got back up for Civil Garn at such a big event because because Paris is it's like it's going to the UK. Hey, it's huge, you know. Mm-hmm. So I find that very strange. So part of me thinks they've got a plan for Civil in a few weeks, and I think it might be that. I don't know. I mean, that's a very cynical take, but I mean, we can't help but be cynical with the UFC sometimes yeah. because they do some 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 stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But and yeah, I didn't think I, about it that way. I, I saw. See that. I, I actually think Gan could cause Tom problems on the feet. So well, on I, the I feet. have to see that. But as soon as you take 
Cyril down, he's over. So, like, yeah. I mean, and Tom has some pretty good wrestling for a British guy. So, yeah, I mean, he played rugby as well. So, I imagine he just rugby tackling. So, there's that. But, yeah, I don't know. Part of me thinks so. I think the John Jones fight was very misleading with, with Cyril Garn. Like, because Jones is so good at grappling, you know. So, part of me thinks, could Cyril Garn keep Tom off him? In that sense, mm, I mean, we haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's a supposition. We haven't seen it. So, um, but we do know. I mean, Surreal God is a, a really, really good kickboxer. Like that's kind of what he does. And I was yeah. kind of looking forward to that Volkov fight because Volkov's on a streak. So it'd be interesting to see how he came along. And it's unfortunate that he's out, but. I, I hope we don't get Gon versus Aspinall for the undisputed. That would just that's awful. Like that, that doesn't even sound good. Like Garn, no offense to Aspinall, but Gon, I mean, come on. That would, that'll be like Garn's second title fight without actually without, fight, like, without earning one. Like it, it would be crazy, but it's so unfitting with that division right now. Yeah, I mean, who who's in tenth in that division? Let's just throw them in there. I mean, Derek Lewis has he has he won in a few years? Yeah, that's it. Like <laughs> you know, what? just let John Jones fight to a vassal. You know. Just, See how that happens. Yeah, you know, I saw him sparring with Pereira um, recently, and Pereira makes even that guy look small. Yeah, like, the monster man. He's such a monster. I saw him next to Sean Strickland when they were uh, doing training together. I'm like, Sean Strickland is a big middleweight. Yeah. He's like your size. He's like six two, isn't he? Yeah, and then Pereira makes him look a whole weight division Ow. small. Like it's just insane. Yes. But then and they fought Pereira each other. Only listed like an inch higher than him. So yeah, it's like have you seen that picture of Pereira and Tyson Fury together? They're like the same height. Yeah, and they look like very close. Like people <laughs> think that Pereira has this like voodoo going on, where he's not allowed to be smaller than someone. <laughs> so no matter what, he just is bigger than you, no matter what. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see. Uh, he's supposed to be six four, which that's a big man. That's a big human. Um, but yeah, I, I have the picture pulled up. I wish my screen share would work. Um, he's like an inch smaller than Fury. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always been a bit of a lie with the whole Fury being six, six foot nine. nine. Yeah, um, I think he is probably closer to six seven. Like. Because he always wears, if you always look at his shoes, he always wears built up shoes as well. So oh, really? <laughs> it's so weird that you're like six foot seven, but you've still got like height issues. You have a, yeah, you have a small man complex. What's up with yeah, that? Yeah, it's so weird, isn't it? Like, like I say, I used to see him boxing training when I was a kid, and I, and I used to think he was a grown man. Like, I used to think, why is this grown man jogging with children? And like, that, that's how big he is. He's that big anyway. So he's yeah, like, he's, he's like our age, age, right? Like somewhere yeah, yeah. in our in our vicinity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big man. It's a big, big man. Big fighting yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, did you watch any of the other boxing fights on that? I night? did. I watched the. Was it the co-main that went the distance? Was that Bwatsi? Bwatsi and um, wow. a black guy versus a white guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To simplify it. Um, yeah, that, that was a good fight. Boatsy versus Hutchins. Hutch, I yeah. I don't know how Hutchins got given. Um, one judge gave it to Hutchins, and I don't know how that, that happened. It's boxing, dude. <laughs> Frank Warren had one on the pay there. Because, yeah, I, when it got to the scoring, I was like, how has anyone scored, like, the guy got knocked down like four times through, throughout the fight. Like, how do you even score that for him? So weird. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think, how do you fix that? You know, like, how, how do you fix that? You know what? I think UFC you, have got better, like, because UFC will kick someone off, won't they? So as soon as there's like a dodgy decision, they'll get rid of him. And yeah, then you I love you on the card. So I think that that's a a good way of doing it like because then but then it's too late it's too late they've already affected one fight but at the end of the day it, it's something proactive like 
And like we never know, that like, Judge just might be having a, a bad day, so it could be saving their career in the long run as well by just getting them off. Yeah, I mean, I get that. It's just, do you, I mean, how well, how much harm would there be in adding two more judges? Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I, keep I your odd it. number, so you can't, yeah. you know, the odds of a draw are so significantly lower. But you add two more judges, or you have some sort of authority to where very clearly this guy made a bad call. So his card isn't going to count. Yeah. And we have the backup judges or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Like, I, I think like, even like judges do extra judges watching it on TV so they can, you know, see it from our perspective, because I think that's a lot of the mistranslation as well is the judges TV versus in- live. Right yeah, there, and we're watching it on TV. So I reckon if there's two judges that can watch it on TV as well, then we'll probably get a more, like, you know, a more honest like uh, thing at the end. But but I don't know how to fix it because it, it's so human to just be biased and you know to favour one person or to mm-hmm. favour style or to favour like your town people. or you know whatever it may be. Yeah, it's just. It could be as simple as like, oh, that guy, you know, is is just more active, and sometimes just being more active isn't being more proactive. It's just moving more. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, we see that a lot in the UFC. Yeah. The guy who's who's who may be coming forward, but it's getting picked off is somehow winning the fight and just yeah. I don't know. But I could see the uh, round tree fight going going quite like that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I did want to talk about a guy you called out last week, Hamza Shiraz. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that fight. He's, he's a, a KO. Sharp-looking guy, man. Yeah. He's, he's For that division, he's, he's big. He's fast, lightning. Fast. How does he keep that weight? Like, how does he, like, like you say, he's so big for the weight, but he's quick. Like, a lot, nothing about him makes sense. But no. He's good, isn't he? And he's only 25. Yeah. Like, that is insane, B. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> That's like a baby for boxing. Like, it's like Dubois only 26. So, yeah. Like, um, if boxing's got a great future ahead of it right now. It, 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 the, these. The, isn't it weird how five years ago we were saying boxing doesn't have a future? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I mean, I, mean, it's I just think I was fighting. Weird. Uh, I think I was saying the heavyweight could have a future if, if they fight each other. So, yeah. Um, I think five years ago we had Young Dubois, Joe Joyce, AJ. Wilder was still like, we didn't know what He was Wilder still relevant. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. weak was chin and weak. An unknown. Like, no defense. <laughs> yeah, it was still like, well, he has beat 48 people, 47 by knockout. So we've got to take him serious to an extent and then you had like I'm trying to think who else was quite fresh around that time Parker Ruiz well we had uh, I think what was it Chisora and White were rematching right. yeah they were like they, they, did they fight three times or two times I know yeah, like, they three were re- times yeah they're, they're so. talking about doing a fourth which oh, I'm, I'm so up for watching that <laughs> like but um, I think what should happen is because they both wanted Wilder so much, um, they should both like fight Wilder. <laughs> like, this just all fight to the other. Yeah, just just put them all three in the ring. See what happens. right. See what happens. See who comes yeah. out on top. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think in those days I could see a future with the heavyweights. But like, I remember complaining about Tank. I remember saying, "Oh, I don't see much of a future if yeah. if Tank keeps acting out Tank acts." Um, and like we didn't, I don't think we knew of the emergence of Tiafimo Lopez and like Devin Haney. Tiafimo still... Lopez, I remember he had just beat Lomachenko, like while yeah. we were doing the last podcast. And we were like, "Yeah, he looked good, but Loma had the shoulder injury." Yeah, you know. So it's like, does a, a healthy Loma lose to Tiafimo Lopez? I don't know, <laughs> but now five years later, he's still going strong. So yeah, and if I remember right, um, Josh Taylor was the undisputed around that time as well. 
I remember you were like, who's this Josh Taylor guy? Because he was in everyone's pound for pounds. And I was like, no, he's really good. Um, but, yeah, obviously that didn't last too long. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who else was kind of relevant during... Yeah, it the... wasn't... wasn't that... Um, I think, uh, like, Connor Ben Jr. And, uh, I mean, Connor Ben and Chris, uh, Eubank Jr., I think they were... The Eubanks, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just remember distinctly having the conversation, like, where does boxing go? They're not building up the stars. But then now, like, I feel like boxing is in such a good place, and MMA is kind of like, where does MMA go? They're not building up yeah. their stars, you know? That's it, isn't it? But they've done a reverse with the trajectory. Yeah. trajectory I can't say it. But <laughs> no, uh, they have the proper done a reverse, and they're like, so like, they've misbuilt their stars, I think. So you look at Sean O'Malley, like, you know, they, they matched him well to suit his skill set up until, like, Peter Yarn. And then, fortunately for O'Malley, he got through the Peter Yarn test. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and force Aljo into, like, coming out early and, and fighting when he's not ready and all this. So I, I kind of look at that as, like, have not helped O'Malley because as soon as he got that title, as soon as there was a number one contender, he was getting beat. It was that simple. And like, it'll be the same if Paddy Pinwork manages to get the 150 belt, you know, as soon as there's a good contender, he'll just get knocked out. Yeah, I just, I, I don't want to be in a world where that happens anytime soon. No, me too. <laughs> like, eventually, sure. I mean, you know, if he keeps winning, that you can't really deny it. But I don't want to be in a world where Patty Pimblett's a UFC champion. Like, that's just... No. Oh, God. <laughs> don't you imagine, like, the... the uh, I can't imagine for you, yeah, the yeah. annoyance. Oh, mate. Because like, everyone will be acting like... So he, he does the Tyson Fury route of, like, acts like a complete prick, bullies people, and then goes, oh, men's mental health. And, like, I cannot be arsed with another one of them. Another, another bully who, who likes to bully people, try and, and then... suicidal, go, oh, but men's mental health. Like, I just can't be arsed with it. <laughs> no, it's funny because that was the the only thing that, like, kind of endeared me to Patty was whenever he gave that post-fight speech about, you know, men's mental health, talk to somebody. I'm like, oh, this guy, you know, he seems like a real guy. He's just putting on an act. And then... He kept doing it and doing it yeah. and doing it. It's like, oh, God, this fucking guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's just doing the Tyson Fury thing, like, of, like, yeah, well, in England, people are dumb as fuck, so I can literally shit on him, do whatever I want to him, call him whatever I want. And, then <laughs> and they'll still love me. It with men's mental health, they'll be like, oh, what a nice guy. That's funny. No, I just... Um... Just the shenanigans. I think we, we were at a point where, it, you know, the Conor McGregor effect was kind of everywhere now oh, yeah. that we're like five years removed from that. The people who are still trying to do it are just annoying, like yeah. O'Malley, like Pemblet. You know, it's just annoying. Like, shut up. Like, just fight. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I actually think Paddy, Paddy's uh, personality is his personality, if, if that makes sense. Like, I do think that is him. But, uh, yeah, like, especially with Sean O'Malley, seeing seeing that McGregor still affects everything he does. Like, his whole career is based off, I want to be the next McGregor. I'm going to be the next McGregor. Literally. Like, that, so, that's all he like, cares about. It's cheap, I think. Because it's like, McGregor had no one to look up to for that. that you know what I mean? So yeah. McGregor was like, I am Conor McGregor. You're all going to love me. And then you see, like, Ian Gary, Sean O'Malley, like, just copy it. It's like, mate, we liked Connor because he was Connor. He was authentic. He was like, himself, yeah. yeah. No, and that's, yeah, I forgot about Ian Gary. Yeah. He's another one of them that are in that same, I want to be cool mold. And it's just yeah. like, dude, just, no, it, you're not it. You're not, you're not, Ian, you're not. Um, all the shit with him and the MMA fan base with him being a cook. No. 
Oh, you're gonna love this, right? All right. So his wife, his wife, um, she's a lot older than him. She's like 10, 20 years older than him. Um, she's British, um, part Brazilian. About, you know what, we mentioned it in the World Cup, the South African one. She was working on that as like a journalist, like an anchor. And as a joke, she wrote like how to be a successful wag, right? In England, the term wag is like wife and girlfriend. But it's for like sports stars or, you know what I mean? So that's what we call the girlfriends of like famous sports stars. We call them wags. Okay. But she wrote this book, How to Be a Wag. And apparently it's tongue-in-cheek, a joke. <clears throat> but in the book, it's all about getting, basically attracting a young, a young, successful sports star that you can mould and, and you can, you know what I mean? To you to but, use him to get famous yourself kind of a thing? Or? Yeah, yeah. So all this has come out. And then because she thinks she's dead media savvy and stuff, she's like come out against it with her own video but she kind of made it worse in a way because it made people talk about it even more <laughs> but then like so this all got forgot about like this was happening when ian gary was supposed to fight quite recently yeah it was so bad ian gary pulled out of the uh, press conference it was when colby when colby was at the press conference and he was talking about ian, everyone shagging ian gary's wife yeah that's when all this happened it got to a point where Colby was even oh, wow. and um but all that kind of got forgot about and then last week she filmed a video of him outside the house with flowers singing up to her and all this and it, it was like it was like she was shaming him knowing that all the MMA fans would be like ah I gotta get right on that yeah. oh my god that is funny as fuck like my favorite did... joke out of it all was that um, you know in hotels they say that they invented the little chair in the corner. They invented that for Ian Gary, <laughs> so you can look at the bed. <laughs> yeah, so you can sit there watching. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is. Yeah, you funny. missed out on some fun with Ian Gary, man. Oh yeah, you know, I missed that completely. Yeah, that all started out because when he fought Magni. He, Magni said something um, along the lines of, I'm a new father now, so I'm used to disciplining my child. So basically, I'll discipline him. Like, you know, just try to build the fight. Ian Gary took that literal and, and was accusing Magni of like... Of like beating, beating his kid like, or something? Yeah, yeah. And his child was like 11 months old or something. Oh so it was God. all silly. But Magni was actually going through divorce proceedings at the time. And this started affecting his divorce proceedings, right? So all MMA fans were just pissed off at Ian Gary anyway. And then when this came out, it was just like, mate, we're going to just ruthlessly bully you now. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. And deservedly so. Bully He's a douche. Gary. He's such a douchebag, man. Oh, yes. I can't stand him. <sighs> anyway. Um, you know what? Great fighter to watch, though. That's what's annoying. Yeah, oh, yeah, he right. He's very talented. There's yeah. no doubt about that. <laughs> it just sucks That's whenever the, when talented fighters have um, absolute shit personalities. Mm -hmm. Awful. Uh -huh, or even yeah. the opposite of that. Whenever you have like a guy you could really cheer for who just is either on the downside of their career or just not as good as you want him to be, that sucks too. <laughs> Yeah, like AJ for me at the moment. Right. <laughs> um, so that that fight was um, yeah, obviously in a big big arena. Obviously, yeah. um, how do you feel? Like, did it have the UK buzzing? Did you feel like oh, the atmosphere? Yeah, what, yeah, what? yeah. Like I was gonna say this. Um, give me that over the sphere all day. Like. I'd rather that enhance the fight more than the fear did to me. Like, knowing that there was 96,000 people, just all, like... I don't know if you if you saw, like, shots of the crowd when they play in, like, Sweet Carolina and stuff. Like, the whole crowd was just buzzing and enjoying it, you know what I mean? So, 
I, I prefer that, seeing all that, than, than the sphere stuff, because well, like, there's real to it. I think what, what annoyed me the most out of the sphere as I look back is like in between the fights and whatnot, there was no excitement. There wasn't anything like people just had their phones out, like filming the sphere, yeah. like just filming what was going on. And it's just like, people weren't there for the fights. Yeah, that's like, it. Uh, there was no, at Wembley, it felt like everyone was partying, you know, like you could literally see like everyone was just partying. Like even McGregor, you could see he was just in and, you know, he was coked out of his mind. It looked like to yeah, me. Yeah, that's but... what I was gonna say. I think uh, I think the coke bee was in London did well that night, like with Fury and McGregor in town. You know, but yeah, um, that was another funny one. Fury's reaction. Did you see it after yeah, it did. AJ lost? He just had Fury to... was like, and he was all like, he was saying to Turkey, he was like, he's just ruined the payday. He's just ruined my big. Yeah, he, he just yeah yeah. Like me, it just cost me millions of dollars or yeah. whatever. Like no, you cost yourself millions of dollars. You've avoided Years ago. this fight. Like you could have had these millions. Like we could have had a trilogy to buy now. Yeah, we really could have. We could have avoided the whole Wilder fiasco. There was no need for three of those. <laughs> if if um if you're in AJ four, Saudis might not even be in boxing right now. Like they might not be necessary. Like. Because those promoters would have made so much money. Yeah, because it would have made so much. So the two promoters would have pretty much been like, we don't need you. We can put this on ourselves. Yeah, we, look how much we made by ourselves, yeah. Yeah, and like that would have then meant the two promoters working together, Matt Troom and um, Queensberry. So it would have bridged the gap that Saudi's already bridged. So part of me thinks if they would have done it, it might have stopped Saudi getting involved anyway. Yeah, but they, you know, they, they, that was the, the Saudi money was the easy money. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do all of this. All you have to do yeah. is promote the fights. We'll, we'll know, do all of it. Did you see how weird it was, though? They did the Saudi Arabia um, national anthem before the fights. I think that was kind of weird. But... It was weird. <laughs> Especially I... given, you know, all the hostilities that have been going on. Well, that's <laughs> like, it, yeah. Well, have a, a song in, in, in Arabic, or, uh, it's just yeah. I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, the the Arabic and all that. I mean, my like, Arabic's just always playing out through London anyway with all the mosques and stuff. But um, no, I just found it weird though. It felt like they bought us. Like mm -hmm. it felt like we were owned by Saudi Arabia in that moment. Yeah, and there was no no Saudi in the fight. There was no, yeah. like, it was just because of the promotion. Money. Yeah, yeah, it's just the money, really. Which... I, Hail I mean, your money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose if if I paid all that money, I mean, I might want them to sing a song for me right. as well. Sing me a song, right? <laughs> yeah, sing me a song, bitches. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for so... Sure. I can understand it in that sense, but I just think the fact that that's our national stadium, it just felt a bit... just felt wrong. Like, and I know this might come across as xenophobic or whatever. I don't mean it in that way. I hate my national anthem because it's about uh, an, an imaginary man in the sky and a bloody king. Uh, God so, save the king. Yeah, so, you know, like, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, ours is better or anything like that. But it just felt just felt weird. It left a, a weird, like, feeling seeing that. It's like, I can't imagine that happening in America. Like, it will happen in America. But yeah, it, it, I mean... It would be weird to see the backlash of it. Oh, I'm sure. Even, I mean, when we play we play the Canadian National Anthem at certain events, we, we went hockey and stuff like that. And um, I mean, we even play UK National Anthem for, like, certain things and whatnot. But it, even those times, it's a little, like... Yeah. So people like, get a little... Uh, little <laughs> No, yeah, it's the same here, don't get me wrong. Like, obviously, there's that patriotism that's like sometimes going too far, looking the, the wrong way. Um, but, but you have all them guys that like anything that's remotely, slightly less English that they're really angry about. Like, so obviously, there's all that. But, yeah, I don't know. I think even like people like me are like, that was weird. And then, like, usually I wouldn't care about a song, but it just felt 
strange. It just didn't feel right. It felt surreal. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel you on that. But I mean, the event was a success. I mean, it was a very very big success, and it was. Um, like I said, the co-main and the main ended with vicious knockouts, and the memes from AJ being knocked out were were some of the greatest I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Rubble man, leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously you have the people who who are a little more cynical and say that the fight was fixed. Yeah. And I was joking when I messaged you that, by the way. I don't know if you if you got oh, yeah, that. I saw, I saw what you mean. Um, I know I know what that was about. Like, where he's like that. Yeah, so basically that's... Well, what everyone in the UK are saying is because AJ got knocked out. And, like, that's one of his favourites, in it? So, like, basically, they, they, they wanted to film his reaction because... Obviously, the UK broadcasters know that he's not going to be happy that AJ's just been knocked out because his whole his whole life plan is to get Fury and AJ in the ring, isn't it? Well, his life plan probably will not come to fruition anytime soon. So, oh yeah. <laughs> but you know, I I still watch it. Like, I don't think I don't think you have to be coming off a win to, to, for that fight to be interesting, Fury AJ. I mean, right now they're both coming off of losses. You know? That's what I'm saying, yeah. They're so, both on equal footing in that regard. Yeah. I mean, technically, Fiori could be coming off three losses like by the end of it. Because like, I don't look at that Nganu fight as a win. Yeah. Mind, that was a loss. Like, even, even though I do think he won the boxing contest, I still think it was a loss just because of how everyone looks at it. You know, and how how looking what AJ did, you know, yeah. just yeah, that that <laughs> made it look very easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's why I still say AJ beats Fiori because AJ is the same size as Ngannou, and as you see when when Fiori fights someone his size like Wilder and, and Ngannou, they get in close and they manage to clip him, and and I don't think I don't think you get up from AJ. You know what I mean? So, or if you do, he's gonna press. And put you down again. So yeah, to bring it back to that, that is why I do think that. I think when he fights someone his own size, he, he really struggles. Yeah, and I think the, uh, he has that intimidation factor. He is a big guy, but yeah. somebody who's who's mentally strong and then won't back down. Like I was, I, re- I rewatched the Wilder Fury fight, the second one recently, and yeah. that's a big size difference. Like that. <laughs> They look like they're in two different weight classes. So, to, to me, you know, Fury uses that size and that jab, and then whatever he does with his gloves to make his hand look longer. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like, where, where he uh, flicks it out, doesn't he? Like, yeah. To out. Yeah, so, so it, that, that jab alone, I mean, he can hit you from, you know, three feet away with his jab, so... I think he does a really good job with that. And he, he uses it to control range and then he can he can hit fairly hard over the top, but once somebody gets in in his face, you see Usyk, who had to get close. Yeah. Took it to well, him. That's so. what I have noticed. Um he's not been able to fight that range for I'm trying to think since Wilder won, I think was the last time I saw him fight at work range successfully. I've noticed well, I when he tried it since he's He's uh, been basically marched down by the opponent. Yeah, I so, think I, I'm, maybe that's a symptom of being knocked down like that. But what was the the fight he had after that, but before Usyk, where he basically lost? Um, not not Ngannou, but he had the big cut over uh, his eye. Yeah, yeah, Wallen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think he lost that one too. It was pretty close. I mean, it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't a crazy win for him, but. Um, yeah, even oh, yeah. that that fight, he tried to get out of range and he got caught. So yes. I mean, people might have figured him out, or he might have, you know, he's on the wrong side of thirty now, so he's yeah. obviously losing a little pep in his step. Part of it is he's lost his legs. I mean, I mean, I think that's why he didn't take the clutch go rematch. I think he knew he couldn't sustain that kind of style like for too long, and I think he thought get away with it once against clutch go, but to try it twice you're going to get your head lifted off you eventually. Yeah, I mean, that could be it. And everybody accuses him of, of running from big fights, so. Yeah. All right. 
so we, we pretty much, I think we covered that top 